So in this video, I want to take a look at my Ferguson Big Board and talk specifically about the PFM monitor that came with the Big Board. Uh, but first, a little bit of the architectural background uh, to help explain what we're going to be seeing here. So PFM comes in a 2716 EEPROM. We can see the EEPROM on my board here. It's version 3.3 of the monitor. Uh, the Ferguson Big Board Power Up basically has these EEPROMs. Well, it does have these EEPROMs in the lower 16K address space. So this EEPROM right here literally starts at address 0000. And let me actually bring up another diagram here. So kind of keep this image in mind. We've got our EEPROMs, we've got our DRAMs. And uh, I've got a picture here we can look at to kind of make this clearer. So here's a, a representation of the board that I put together. And we've got this PFM EEPROM here that on power up, sits in the address space 0000 to 07 ff What PFM does at power up is it copies this ROM bank into high memory. So we've got our four banks of 16k EEPROMs here, we've got the lower 16k, the next 16k, the next one up, and then the upper. And PFM actually gets copied up to address uh, F000 through FFFF. So the ROM contents gets carried in, uh, copied into DRAM up here in high memory, and then the, the monitor switches over to running out of the high memory. There is a bit that can control uh, basically the lower 16K of RAM. On power up, the EEPROMs are on the bus. When you set that bit, uh, this lower 16K of RAM is on the bus, and this is ignored. And that way, uh, you can power the system up, ROM gets copied up to high memory, it gets executed, the DRAM then gets swapped in the lower 16K, and from there you can boot CPM. CPM expects memory all the way down to address 0000. So what we're going to take a demonstration of here is this in action. So uh, let me bring up the documentation for PFM. I wonder, let's see. Is that on screen? I'm guessing that was screwed up and not on screen. And let's bring up TerraTerm here. And we'll talk about one more thing here. So let me jump back to here. So we've got a, a, a parallel keyboard or a parallel ASCII keyboard connector here where a parallel ASCII keyboard can be connected to the system. And we've got video out sitting over here. And the system can generate a, a 24 line by 80 column video display and use this onboard parallel ASCII keyboard. It can also connect the monitor to a serial port down here on this serial connector down here. Uh, for this demonstration, I'm going to use a, a serial port here connected to TerraTerm on my PC. So that's what we have here is we have TerraTerm hooked up to COM5 that is wired around onto the uh, system on that second serial port. And you can actually see the cabling right here. So the, 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 there is signal ground and transmit and receive being brought off. And essentially going to a, an RS-232 to USB adapter and to my PC. So hopefully that all makes some sense. Let me get back once again to... Got too many things open here. Here and here. So on reset... The PFM monitor will watch that parallel ASCII keyboard port and will watch the serial port to say who is going to send me a character and become the uh, you know the master device, the console. So let me reach over here. I'm going to reset the uh, Ferguson Big Board and then I'm going to just send a character here off of TerraTerm to the system. And that echoes back at System Monitor 3.3 or PFM 3.3 and gives me the prompt here, which is what the asterisk says. Uh, which pretty much covers what we see here, only, you know, it gives us an actual banner telling us what's in the ROM. So I struggled for a long time with getting PFM to work correctly. And I was convinced there was an issue in the system, there was something going on. It didn't make a lot of sense. And that's because I would do things like dump address 0000 through address 00FF. And in that case, it actually tried to work. Interesting. Dump EFFF through FFFF. And notice here the address block that it dumped doesn't match what I asked for here. So this was the stuff that was really confusing me about why doesn't the PFM monitor seem to follow the command syntax here. D for dump, upper or lowercase doesn't matter. Start address, comma, end address. 
And I hate to say it, I spent way too much time chasing this. At one point, I pulled out that 2716, dropped it into my 2716 programmer, compared it to a, a file I found on the internet for the, you know, the, the ROM uh, binary, and there was a one-bit difference where I could see that the 2716 on the board was starting to lose programming. The uh, EEPROMs work by storing charge, basically, uh, in a poly that's... Let's not dive into that. It stores charge to convert a 1 to a 0, and that charge will slowly leak out, and that bit will become a 1. You know, over time, uh, you know, the EEPROM programming loses charge. So I just refreshed the EEPROM. I uh, just reprogrammed it, and it's nice and solid. That didn't fix the issue. I spent a whole lot of time mucking around with various things. Just this whole time thinking I've got some weird memory bug or something here making me crazy here. And what I accidentally discovered was this. Dump EFFF -F -F through FFFF -F 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 actually dumps the block in question. The only difference there was I didn't type a space after the dump command. I did dump, address, comma, address without a space. With the space, uh, it fails. And this is a case where I spent a whole lot of time looking at this and confused and finally realized even though it kind of shows a space there, there is no space. So I've spent a huge amount of time using the test command. Let's go ahead and demo the test command. So we can test. We'll go from address 0000, zero, zero, zero through address 00FF. So we'll test the lower 256 bytes of memory. And what you see are plus signs being kicked out here. And so every one of these plus signs means it's completed a pass. Uh, I believe it started with data of 00, the next plus sign was data of 01, the next plus sign is data of 02. As I understand it, it's got to output 256 pluses to indicate it's actually made a full pass uh, through the memory testing values of 00 all the way to FF hex. So, sometimes I can get it out of the, there it is, got it back out of the test. So the system has spent huge amounts of time with me basically doing this. Test 0000, zero, zero, zero common through EFFF. Remember that F000, zero, 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 the next address here, is where the monitor starts. So we don't want to test that upper little bit of RAM because we'll right over the top of the monitor and crash the system. And the system for me has spent just huge amounts of time sitting here basically running this memory test over and over and over. And you can see there it, it, it's completed one pass. It's moving on to the the next bit pattern as I understand it. I haven't actually looked at the source code for the monitor to make sure that's the way it acts, but it basically says that here uh, inside of the documentation. Let me reset the system one more time. We'll get control back here, and we'll talk about the commands. So dump, you know, it's a, it's a very standard monitor command. Dump. We'll take F000. Zero, zero, zero. Oops, it would help if those were actually zeros. Through FFFF, and there is the actual monitor itself. Remember, this got copied out of the 2716 EEPROM. Uh, there's little bits and pieces in here that are recognizable. Let me get my glasses on. You can see right here that it says System Monitor 3.3 kind of right in these lines here. So there's a little bit of ASCII text in the monitor. Uh, I've looked through this. You can find the, the what, you know, the error message what that gets displayed. Uh, it's buried in here someplace. I don't remember where. But this is basically a dump of the monitor. And we can basically see that that first EEPROM actually ends at address F7FF. And so the monitor doesn't quite go all the way to the end of the ROM. And then where the second EEPROM would have got copied into memory. Actually, nothing got copied up here into high memory, it looks like. This is not really sure. This looks like it was like a power-up pattern. Uh, but finally, we'll see up at the top of high memory here. So I'm sure the system stack is sitting up here at the absolute top of memory. Remember, the, the stack works downward. So as you push things onto the stack, memory decrements. And it comes down when you pop things off, it moves back up. So I would guess these two lines here have to do with stack. But you can see the last command that I ran right here. 
dump F000 to FFFF. That command had to be stored someplace to be parsed and executed, and, and that's happening in RAM, so there's the input buffer. So we can kind of see a few things here from the dump command. Uh, uh, of course, the address, F, so this, this byte here is F000 all the way to F00F up here. Uh, and we can see, the, of course, the hex values here, and if we were to pull up a listing of PFM, uh, we can actually go find that. Let's go ahead and look for that. See if I can find the listing here. And let's see, F000 is cold start. So there's a C32AF0, and you'll see right here, C32AF0. So, you know, here's the output of the monitor being uh, assembled and what it ended up in RAM, and it should match exactly. Uh, if we go up to F300, scroll down here a ways, actually a long ways, F300, F200, F300, F300 has a C0, we spotted F300 here, has a C0, and it's followed by a 4D CD, 4D CD. So you can see here how the monitor that's programmed into the EEPROM gets you know copied up into RAM as we described before. So let me get back to the PFM mon uh, documentation, which I believe is here. So what the monitor allows you to do is interact directly with memory. Oops, I didn't need to scroll there. So I could do a, a memory. Uh, can start at address 0000, and it will show me what's currently at that address, and I could change it to a 1, 2, a 4, 5, an F0, an FE. I can actually change the contents of memory here. Uh, how do I get out of this? There it is. And now if I do a dump of 0000, 000, 000, 000 comma 000, 000F, we should see the first four bytes be 1245F0FE, 1245F0FE. So there's a case where I could write something in the memory so I could actually assemble that, get the assembler output, and then type the hex bytes into memory if I wanted to. So you know, the memory command's useful. We've looked at test. We can fill memory. Let's do a fill from 0000 to 00FF, value AA. Fill 0000, comma, 00FF, the value AA. And now if I dump uh, F, uh, or dump 0000 through 00FF, we should see that I've completely filled that block of memory with A. So this fill command is useful, you know, like it shows here, for overriding a block of memory, zeroing it out, whatever you want to do. You can copy blocks of memory around. So we could say, actually, I'm haven't tried the copy command. Copy from uh, F800 through FFFF. And to and we're gonna we're gonna copy this into the lower block of memory here, 0000. And now if we dump 0000 and we'll just take it through FF again. What did I do wrong? F000. So what did I do there? I think I got an address wrong. I did. Let's try that again. Copy F000 through FFFF to low memory. That should actually copy all that uh, data down. Now if we do a dump 0000, 000 through 00FF to make it quick, we actually can go back and see that C32AF0 we looked at before in the listing, which, which is a jump to F02A, but you can see there you can copy blocks of memory around. That can be useful. The verify command is gone. Uh, there's a go to command that would allow us to go to an address and begin execution. So uh, 
you know, we could use the memory command to put bytes into memory. We could use G to run them. There's two commands here that deal with the floppy controller. We can read data from the, the, the unit 01, the track and the sector on that track, and we can tell it to boot from it. And this is how you get CPM loaded, was you basically put in a bootable CPM disk and hit B, and that basically goes through the sequence of getting CPM loaded and running. And finally, there's import and output commands here. Uh, it's a very simple monitor. It's a very common kind of monitor. The big learning for me, like I said, was this isn't a space through here, but a space in. It does unhappy things. So we've copied really the monitor into low memory. I'm sitting here wondering if I did a go to address 0000, would that simulate essentially a restart of the system? Let's find out. Go 0000. We'll either crash it. It's sitting here. If I hit enter, do I get the monitor? Well, I got something, but it's pretty unhappy. Uh, I'm guessing the auto baud rate negotiation didn't happen. So the monitor is smart enough to do auto baud rate. Now reset the computer. Huh. Do I actually have to power down? Let me hit reset again over here. I've got no idea what's going on there. I'm going to reset the power here. Excuse me. Looking off into space you can't see. So the power's been unplugged. Power's plugged back in. There we're back. So whatever I did with that go scrambled something in the system and I don't think it was actually, I believe it, did, it actually didn't believe it was doing a cold start. Uh, so it is what it is, you know, like I said, experiment, I didn't really necessarily expect it to work. Would have been cool if it had, but anyhow, there's a quick look at the PFM monitor, the bit of learning I got from it. Oh, excuse me. Kind of explanations of, of you know, what, what I was saying. Before the test command will actually output an address, the hex value at red and what it should have been there. I have actually seen blocks of memory suddenly appear to fail. Uh, but when I reset the machine, they're absolutely fine, and I'm not really sure what that is. I don't know if it's actually failing or not, or if it's just I'm shuffling papers and things around here on the desktop and disturbing the system, maybe. Uh, not really sure. I'm not going to know really for sure until I get to the point where I'm booting CPM on it. Uh, Verify is deleted. Go to read. Read actually can produce an error message. Disk, re disk error XX. Uh, where it'll tell us what the error was. I would assume right now if I did a read command we would get probably a drive not ready. Read zero track zero sector one read, but space in, didn't I? Zero, comma, zero, one. Disk error. So the most significant bit is set, one, two, three, four, and that is a drive not ready, which is exactly what I'd expect. That's actually potentially a good test because it said it was able actually to talk to the floppy controller, which I do have installed, uh, and attempt to do something. So that's actually a, a pretty good command. I know if I do a boot here, it'll just hang. Oh, no, it didn't hang. I'm lying to you. Produces the same disk error, which makes sense. There's not, not even a drive hooked up. So, uh, what else can I say here? Uh, apparently, I have a message on Reddit, or uh, something on Reddit to look at. Anyhow, hopefully this has made some sense. Uh, I've come quite a ways from that really dirty board we started out with to having a system running here uh, and getting very close to trying to boot floppies. So I'll wrap this one up here, I guess, and we'll talk soon.